Hi, welcome back to Busby Bakes. As you know, I'm Joe. First off, big thank you. Had a lot of extra subs over the last couple of weeks, which is fantastic. I know it's a lot of you guys coming over from the Whiskey Tribe on Facebook, but still, big thank you. And let's see if we can keep you here by getting you as obsessed with bread as you are whiskey. And this should be the video to do it, because today's the big one. We're going to be learning to make sourdough bread. So sourdough bread, now as I've said before, it's kind of the holy grail of bread baking, but there are a million varieties out there and there's also a million recipes and a million techniques for making it. But what I want to give you today is a recipe and technique that I think will guarantee you a successful loaf at the end of it. I have dished up to my family way too many flat, dense, gummy loaves that they have had to sit there politely at breakfast going, mm, that's really lovely, Joe. Um, because they know it's taken me two days to make it and they don't want to hurt my feelings. But I want you to avoid that humiliation and I think this should be the recipe to do it. Don't go into it thinking you're going to create the greatest sourdough loaf ever, but what you should get at the end is a nice light loaf, good volume, nice ear uh, and a fantastic flavour. Then, as with all things, practice makes perfect. So this will give you a good grounding and then you can take the recipe any way you want to go, up the hydration, change proofing times, all those things to adapt the bread the way you want it. But before you can do that, you want some success. You want to build your confidence. So doing this recipe, getting a nice successful loaf at the end of it, should do that. So for this recipe, you're going to need a kilo of flour. I'm going to be using 950 grams of strong white bread flour and 50 grams of rye flour. I'm using those two because that's what I feed my starter, so I want to mirror that in the final loaf. The rye, like I say, acts as a bit of a boost, helps with fermentation, but we're going to keep the amount low because rye doesn't have a lot of gluten in it. So the more rye you put in, the less gluten development, and therefore potentially a weaker dough and the more chance of a flat loaf at the end. So when you're starting out, keep the amount of rye low, but once you're up and running and know what you're doing and you've got a bit of confidence, you could up the rye or you could swap it out for wholemeal flour, spelt flour, kamut, any of those things, that is something you can play with. You're also going to need 22 grams of salt and then you need 400 grams of starter or leaven, levan. I think I tend to say levan because I've watched way too many uh, YouTube videos from America on sourdough baking. But leaven, levan is the same thing. Then you're going to need water. And for this recipe, we're going to be keeping the hydration at the lower end because a stiffer dough just makes life a little bit easier uh, and it guarantees your successful result at the end of it. So if you've never made sourdough before and you want to make sure it comes out nice and full at the end, I would recommend using 550 grams of water, which is about 63% hydration. If you're feeling a little more confident, you can take that up to 600 grams. That's what I'm going to be doing today, uh, partly because I've got a little bit more confidence in this, but partly because this flour I'm using does seem to absorb quite a lot of water. So I'm going to use 600 grams. It's still going to produce quite a stiff dough, but what that does is it helps with all your timings really, gives you a little bit more leeway. So you can really push the bulk fermentation, which is going to help with the lightness at the end. Uh, if you don't shape it quite tightly enough, it's going to have enough strength still to support itself. And if you overproof it at the end, again, the slightly stiffer dough is just going to help it hold its shape. So, in our mixer, we need to put our kilo of flour. So hopefully I'll pre this, that should be 950 of strong white bread flour. And then take that up to a kilo with the rye. There we go. And now to that we're going to add our 600 grams of water, or 550 if you want to be on the really safe side. Six. There we go. Into the mixer. And we're going to mix this just for one minute. If you've read many sourdough recipes, they'll often say 
uh, bring the ingredients together to a shaggy mass. So that's what we're looking for here. Normally it takes about a minute. Just watch the bottom of the bowl and see once all the little bits of flour and the flecks of dough have combined together, that's where you stop. So I'll do that. Okay, there we go, that's come together. As you can see, it's not smooth, we haven't developed the gluten, but it's come together as one lump. If I just wet my fingers, I'll show you. If you try and stretch this now, you'll see it just breaks off. No gluten development. But what we're gonna do now is leave it for half an hour. And this stage is called the auto lease. And basically it's an opportunity for the flour to absorb the water uh, the enzymes in the flour start breaking the flour down, the gluten starts developing, and what we're doing here is we're starting to create a nice extensible dough, meaning a stretchy dough. So like, like chewing gum, when you pull it, it stretches without breaking. That's what the auto lease does. So cover it with a tea towel, and we're going to leave it for half an hour. This is something you can experiment with. You could start this the night before and leave it to auto lease overnight. You could do four hours, two hours, one hour. Really half an hour is kind of the minimum you want to do to gain some benefit from it. But we'll just come back in half an hour and check it and I'll show you what a difference it's made to Okay, so that's been half an hour of auto lease. I'll show you the dough and you can see what effect that's had. If I lift that up, you can see it's no longer clumped around the dough hook. It's relaxed, it's got a bit smoother. If I just wet my fingers so it doesn't stick, you can see it's just stretchier. And look at that, we can almost pull it out into a window pane. It's just developed a bit of gluten and that's through no kneading, that's just been sitting there. So the next stage is to add the sourdough starter or your Levan. So we'll take that off and we want to add our 400 grams. Now that is quite a lot, uh, that's sort of at the top end of what you want to be using. Uh, look at that, nice and active. This has probably tripled uh, since I fed it, which is a really good sign. So we're going to be adding 400 grams and that is just going to ensure we get some really good fermentation. Uh, and it's also going to speed up the process a little bit. So we'll do our bulk proof after this for about four hours. And now back into the mixer, and this time we're going to mix it for three minutes. Again, we're not looking for full gluten development. This is just to distribute that Levan leaven throughout the dough and three minutes should be ample. Okay, so that's been three minutes. As you can see, the Levan is nicely incorporated. The dough is looking nice and smooth. You'll find as it sort of gets worked into it, it goes to a stage where it gets quite sticky and starts going all over the side of the bowl. But keep going, within that three minutes, it will come back together in a smooth paste. So now, we're going to leave that for another half an hour. I haven't forgotten the salt, but we'll add that after this half hour. This is just going to give the chance for the starter to get going, the fermentation to get underway, all without being inhibited by the salt. Because salt and yeast do not get on. So we're just going to give the yeast a little head start uh, to get that fermentation underway. So half an hour is all you need. Again, this is something you could play with. You can maybe do an hour. Uh, up to you, but for this recipe we're going to do half an hour. Okay then, so that's been another half hour. You probably won't notice uh, much activity, much change, but it has given the chance for that starter just to get going and for fermentation to begin. See we're looking nice and stretchy. Now we're going to add our salt and then this is the last phase of the mixing. So the 22 grams of salt goes in. And again, we're going to mix this for another three minutes. Okay, there we go, that's been three minutes. The dough's come together nicely. 
looking stretchy, smooth, the um, salt's fully incorporated. So now we're going to move into the bulk fermentation. And this is a really important bit, and I think an area where lots of people go wrong in that they don't leave it for long enough. This is the opportunity for the dough to ferment, the yeast to work, start creating those carbon dioxide bubbles and set the structure of the dough. Now we're not just going to leave it for four hours, we're going to do some stretch and folds every half hour. Now you'll see a lot of sourdough recipes say um, read the dough, you might only need to do one set of turns, two sets of turns, but we're going to do four, so for the first sorry we're going to do six. For the first three hours we're going to do a set of stretch and folds every half hour so that's going to give us six sets of stretch and folds and then we will leave it for the final hour just to bulk ferment untouched. So scrape the dough off of the dough hook. There we go and now cover it either with a tea towel or actually a bit of cling film would be good because that will definitely stop it drying out because like I say it's going to be left out for four hours and then set a timer if you've got a double timer perfect you want four hours on the top one and you want half an hour on the bottom one and that's going to remind you to come back every half an hour to do the stretch and fold so we'll leave that now and then I'll show you what to do when the time Okay, so we're half an hour into our bulk proof, uh, so it's time to do our first set of stretch and fold, or our first turn set, you'll see the recipe say. So, the stretch and folds, the idea is we're going to grab the dough gently, we're going to pull it as far as it will go till it meets, reaches maximum resistance, but before it starts to tear, and then we're going to fold it back in over itself. And we'll do this four times. And doing that is going to build up layers of dough and this is what sets the structure of the bread and adds strength to that dough. So if you wet your hand just to stop the dough from sticking, then reach in down the side, grab it, pull it, pull it. You can feel that any more and that's going to start tearing, so just fold it back in over itself. Turn the bowl 90 degrees and do the same again. Grab it, pull and in, 90 degree turn, in, pull. You can't stretch it as far by the time you get to the third and fourth one because the dough's started to tighten up, seize up a little bit. So you just have to be more careful. So pull, and now that we can see the whole thing's released, so just fold that last one over itself you can tuck the seams under, so it looks nice and neat. Um, cover it up again. So, every half hour, repeat this. You'll find as you go, the dough will stretch less as it's building up strength, as the gas bubbles are building up in it. Plus, the further into the bulk you go, the more delicate you need to be. You don't want to be pulling it and tearing it and popping those bubbles. So when you come to the third, fourth, fifth set, just gently, again, wet your hands so you're not tearing it in, stretch, fold, turn. And then we're going to leave it for the last hour. But what I'll do now is I won't show you the next turn set, so that's going to get very boring. I'll pick it up from the final turn set in about three hours. We'll do that one and then we'll leave the bulk to finish.
and that is the end of the bulk proof. I covered mine with a bit of cling film just for the last hour to stop it drying out. Take that off. You can see we've got some good volume, it's puffed up, it's nice and light. Um, and if you get to this stage and that's happened, you're onto a winner. All you've got to do now is pre-shape it, shape it and bake it without knocking out the air. The work is done. So let's... A little bit of flour on the work so we really don't want too much because we're going to pre-shape this using our bench scraper and we want a bit of traction between the sticky dough and the work surface to shape the dough. We're not going to be using our hands a lot and folding it, we're literally just going to be moving the dough around to get it into its shape. So just a little bit of flour and now as always Scrape it out without tearing it or stretching it too much. There we go. And now we want to divide it in two because this is enough for two loaves. So I'm just going to put a little bit of flour in a line and that's just going to stop the dough scraper from sticking to the dough. And now I'm just going to eyeball it Basically you want to divide it in two. I wouldn't bother weighing it. You're going to do more damage to the dough, cutting it, folding it, getting it on the scales, checking, cutting bits off and sticking them on. It's better to have them slightly different sizes, but without touching them as much as possible. So something like that. And now, like I say, we just want to pre-shape these. So that means getting them into sort of the rough shape that they're going to end up being. So I've got round banner tones, so I want to make mine round into a ball shape. So at this stage, this side is sort of non-sticky compared to the side I've just cut. So get the dough scraper around the back and just... This is the sticky side, so we're going to push that onto the worktop and it's going to stick a little bit. Now we've built up a bit of a dome on top, touch more flour and now it's just a case of pushing it and tucking it under, pushing it, tucking it under and just keep doing that until you feel tough. You can see when you push it forward the back doesn't move so it builds tension. So just do that a few times, just to get the dough into a round. There we go, it's got a good bit of height to it. It's got some tension, that one is fine. So we'll do the same with this one. So again, that's the sticky side. Push the dough onto the sticky bit. There we go. If it's sticking to your hands, just give it a teeny bit of flour on top. But if you get lots of flour on the worktop, as you're pushing it, what will happen is the dough will just be sliding along and it won't be gripping and building up tension. So there we go, that's the two loaves pre-shaped. And now you just leave them for, again, about half an hour. This part's called the bench rest and this is going to give the dough time just to relax a little bit after that bit of work we've given it. It'll take that shape. You can leave them uncovered or just pop a tea towel on top so that the top can just dry out ever so slightly, stop it being so sticky. So leave them for half an hour and then we'll give them their final shape and get them into their banatones. So we're nearly there. That's the uh, bench rest over, so that's been about half an hour. What you want to look for here is to see how much the dough has spread. So if you come back after half an hour and they are looking flat, they've spread out to there, they're about an inch high, then either you're over hydrated, which is not going to be a problem if you follow this recipe because we've gone for the low end. If they're flat um, for this recipe, it's probably because your starter is not active enough, you haven't had enough fermentation, 
um, and there just isn't enough strength and activity in the dough. Um, if you've done all your folds, then you've definitely created as much strength as you can. So really the main culprit there will be your starter is not strong enough. I've seen a few posts on forums where people say, oh, I've got this far and I didn't see much activity, but I've carried on anyway. I really wouldn't bother. You're gonna bake a loaf that's probably about that high, is dense and gummy, and it just won't be nice. Go back, feed your starter, give it a couple of days to really get up to speed, and then start again. Looking at these, we've still got some good height to them, so we've got some good activity. So these are now ready to shape and give them their final proof. So, the final shape, I would give a little sprinkling of flour on top. Not too much, because these aren't too sticky now. Get the dough scraper under there, flip it over, and like I say, it's all about being gentle and keeping that air in there, but at the same time, trying to shape them into a nice round. You're looking for a compromise. I used to really shape them really tight to get a nice round, which got some good looking loaves, but you'd find the crumb was quite tight because you pushed out a lot of the air. So it's about being gentle, just pull the dough out, fold one side in, fold the other side over, and because we didn't have any flour on there, you can see that stuck. Then take the top, pull it away from you, Fold it over and now just keep rolling that in on itself and that's it. If you had um, a, re um, sorry, a rectangular banditone, the long ones, that is all you'd need to do. You could scoop that up, seam side up into the banditone. But because I've got round ones, I now need to kind of coax this into a bit of a ball shape. So a bit like when we were doing the pre-shape, just move it around. I've probably got a little bit too much flour on the worktop to get any real traction. But just turn it and pull it, bringing it into a round, tucking it under, and that is probably good enough. We've got some tension there. And what I'll do is I'll just leave that for a minute or two, just for the seams underneath to stick together. If I flip it over now and put it in the banatone, the seams might release and it will just collapse down. We want them to stick, so we'll shape the other one. So again, flip it over, pull the two sides out, one, two, pull that one up and over. You can, instead of tucking it on itself, turn it around and pull the other one over and then tuck the four corners in. That will give you a nice round shape, but the more um, bits of dough you're pulling and folding, the more air you're potentially pushing out. But I'll give it a go. So one corner in, one corner in, that corner in, and that corner in. And as you can see, we've naturally built up a bit of a round shape. Turn it and pull it a few times. And there we go. So like I say, leave them for But now the nicer the loads will look. Dough scrape underneath, flip it over onto your hand. As you see, the seal seems to have just sealed up. So gently in there. Same with this one. In it goes. And now cover these. And I would say you ideally want to proof these from. Um, maybe 45 minutes to an hour. But there's a little bit of a compromise we've got to do here. Because we've got two loaves, if we let them both prove 45 minutes to an hour and then bake the first one, the second one's not going to get baked till about an hour and three quarters. And by then it will be overproof. 
So you've got to do a little bit of a compromise here. Bake the first one a bit early and the second one a bit late. So I would bake the first one after half an hour. And I know that doesn't sound long, but we've done a very long bolt proof and we've also used a lot of Levan to get this going. So they're not going to need a long final proof. Half an hour actually probably will be ample. So I'll do this one after half an hour. That'll bake for 45 minutes, which means we'll be doing this one after an hour and a quarter. Now, once you've done this the first time, you can check your loaves and compare them after they've baked. If the second one's looking a bit flat compared to the first one, it means it's overproof. So then you can try baking the first one after 20 minutes, and then that'll be the second one after an hour and about an hour and five minutes. If that one is still overproofing, you're in the situation there where you're going to have to retard the second loaf in the fridge. And my advice would be, at this stage, once you've shaped them, leave this one out to proof half an hour and get the second one straight in the fridge. Don't let it proof at room temperature for any amount of time, otherwise it will go over. But, once you've got it in the fridge, you've got to let it proof for about four hours in the cold. So that extends your whole cooking time. So my best advice would be try and find a time that is a good compromise to bake both loaves. If you've got two Dutch ovens and a massive oven that you can do them in one go, perfect. But if not, like I say, you're looking for that compromise. So I'm going to let these proof for half an hour. After about 15 minutes, I'll get my stock pot in the oven and get that preheated to full blast. So after half an hour, I can get the first one in. Okay, so here we go, the final part, the bake. So my oven's preheated as hot as it goes, that'll be about 230, 240 degrees. This has been in there preheating with it, so it is roasting hot. I'll just take the lid off. Now, pick a loaf. What I like to do is just get a little bit of um, baking parchment to lay on there. Pick the pan up with one hand. Be very careful because that is hot. You get that on that skin, that's going to burn. So place it over, flip it over, lift the basket out, and then with a bread lane, which is basically a razor blade, just slash the top of the loaf. There we go. Lid on, and that goes into the oven. Set a timer for 23 minutes, and bake that as hot as the oven goes, with the lid on for 23 minutes. Then take the lid off, reset the timer for 23 minutes, and bake it without the lid on for that final 23 minutes. If you don't like your loaf too dark, too um, charred almost, you can turn the oven down to about 220, 200 for that second 23 minutes. That's what I do. My family aren't so keen on that really dark crust. So I'm going to get that into the oven and then I will show you the results once it's fully baked. Woo -hoo -hoo! Look at that beauty. There we go. So that's been 46 minutes in total. 26, uh, 23 minutes with the lid off. Let's get this out, being very careful, the pan is roasting hot. But look at that. Good ear, good shape, nice crispy crust, hollow sounding bottom. That is lovely. I won't cut it open now. You need to allow that to cool for at least a couple of hours. When you first get a loaf out of the oven, it's still cooking on the inside. So if you cut it now, you'll find it's still gummy and doughy on the inside. Lots of steam will escape, and then it's just going to dry out and stale much quicker. But that is it. Now it's up to you to give it a go yourself. The only way you're going to learn to make sourdough and improve is through practicing. I see it on Instagram all the time. People post wonderful pictures of bread, and everyone asks, please share your recipe, but there is only one recipe, flour, water, salt, yeast. The rest is the technique of the baker, um, the technique, 
their timing, their skill, and you're only gonna get that by practicing yourself. So go on, give it a go. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a thumbs up, or why not, even better, subscribe to the channel. Uh, as always, leave any questions, comments, feedback below. It's great hearing from you, and I will always try to get back to you. Um, that's it, give it a go. Follow this recipe, this technique, you should get a result at least as good at that, and then you can start taking this anywhere you want to go. Up the hydration, change your proofing times, and you can make the, you know, get your loaf the way you want it. But this is a really good grounding. Then, if you make some changes and it starts going wrong, you can just rein it back in and come back to this and then try again. But at least if you're churning this out, you know you can do it. So go on, get in that kitchen, give it a go, and as always, happy baking.